Which team feels different today in the NFL? Because you're still going to have teams that may win one, two, three, four games, but there are teams that feel different today. Like Jacksonville feels different. That doesn't mean that they're going to have five, six wins. Chicago Bears feel different today. Patriots feel a little different. But they feel a little different because of free agency. Not taking Mac Jones. Dolphins feel a little different. I like what they did. Houston feels a little different because maybe Houston feels stranger. A little weirder. Because that quarterback room, there's no Deshaun Watson there. And you draft Davis Mills out of Stanford. Tyrod Taylor is there as a Band-Aid quarterback. I wonder if the Texans wanted to take Kellen Mond, who went the pick before to Minnesota. And that's interesting, too. A little intrigue in Minnesota there. The Niners feel different today. We'll talk to Peter King about that. Coming up, we'll have a uh, poll question. There's a play of the day, stat of the day, all of that coming up. Our program brought to you by M Drive, powerful ingredients backed by science. Help me get energized, stronger, leaner. I love Wang. Go to mdrivedan.com today. Get free shipping, 60 day money back guarantee. Don't let age beat you. Refine your prime with M Drive. And I love Wang. How you doing over there, Seton? <laughs> I'm great. This Monday couldn't start any better yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good stuff there. 877 3DP show. If you would like to dial us up, let us know what you liked, you didn't like. We do it every single Monday, best and worst of the weekend. McLevin, I have a poll question for you. The second and third day of the NFL draft is a time for fans to take a leap of faith because a lot of times we'll know the names in the first round. You get to the second day, third day, and you're going, hmm. And while I know the school, I'm not quite familiar with that player. So the leap of faith is you trust your front office. You trust that they know what they're doing. And there's always the chance that your team gets a star in the second or even lower rounds. A skill position player. You know, a lot of the uh, receivers that had big years last year, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, DK Metcalf, you know, you get those after the first round. Same at running back. Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb, second round. Alvin Kamara, third round draft pick. Aaron Jones, a fifth rounder. And this year was loaded with post-first-round receivers and running backs, and they could turn out to be stars. So I wouldn't spend too much time thinking about the first round as much as I would doing a little research on the other rounds. Because when you start to fill out your team, you're going to need those second-day, third-day players, and that's where your team goes from being good to great. You can get a marquee player, an impact player, but you have to have some players that, you know, you're able to complement these great players. As, as wonderful as Kansas City is, you have to have players who complement Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. Because without that, you're not going to have a Super Bowl champ or at least contender. Same with Tom Brady. You know, you got Brady, but you have to have those players to complement him. And that's the reason why they won the Super Bowl. Uh, poll question. What kind of poll question do you have for me, McLovin? So I, we think you might not like this oh. because you don't like the great drafts as they are. But who feels like they had the best draft? And we're just sort of going around the different sites. And I'll tell you some of the A's. All right. The Cleveland Browns. Okay. The New York Jets. All right. The Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Chicago Bears. Go. Oh. Yeah. Patriots are getting some love. They're sort of on the periphery of this. Not a ton of love. It really is those those four teams above are the big winners. See, I think the Dolphins should oh, be in here. Sorry, and the Dolphins too is a good one. Yep, I skipped miss those. I think the Chargers did well. A lot of times, what happens is you'll draft somebody, and the Chargers drafted an offensive lineman out of Northwestern. Now you might go, okay, it's smart we did that, but there's no no excitement there. Rashawn Slater, he might be a guy who starts for you. I like when you draft a lineman. He's the guy who starts for you for 10 years. There's no other position where you go, he's going to be a 10-year starter. But an offensive lineman, he could be a 10-year starter. No other position. Now, you can say quarterback, but as far as aside from the quarterbacking position, you get a tackle, he could start for 10 years. Always, always the tackle there. 
I like what the Chargers did. I like what the Dolphins did. Uh, I like what the Jets did, and it's very rare when we can say that. But if you're going to draft a quarterback, you've learned, or at least the organization should have learned from previous drafts when you draft a quarterback and then you don't draft players to help him, chances are he won't succeed. But I think Zach Wilson at least can hit the ground running. He's got some skill position players. They've got some offensive linemen there to help him a little bit. And you're just going to ease into the season. It's not like you look at the Jets and you go, boy, they're going to be like the Buffalo Bills this year. They're not. But I think when you're the Jets and a Jets fan, like you're looking for a victory any month of the season. And this is a victory in May. Now, granted, that doesn't help you in the standings come September, but at least you have a little bit of hope. And every NFL fan base, that's all you're asking for, hope. The Lions are asking for hope. You got Jared Goff, a bunch of draft picks. There's hope. Jacksonville has hope. Jets have hope. That's all, you're, that's all you want out of this. Do we have, are we moving forward here? Because a lot of teams, you go, I don't know what you're thinking here. I don't know what Denver's thinking. I, I, I truly don't. You don't have a good quarterback. You draft a cornerback and a running back to start off with. I think they're interesting only because of maybe the Aaron Rodgers situation. So you can't come out of the draft and go, man, Denver's interesting. Like, they're interesting because they didn't take Justin Fields or Mac Jones. And now we go, man, maybe Aaron Rodgers could end up in Denver just like Peyton Manning did the end of his career. Okay, if that's the only reason why you're interesting, you didn't have a good draft. But I guess there's the potential of Aaron Rodgers, if they don't fire the GM, is going to ask to be traded. Do I think he'll retire? No. And there's no guarantee he gets the Jeopardy job, by the way, because people think, oh, you know, he could retire and fall back on the Jeopardy job. I don't know if he's getting the Jeopardy job. I think he did well, by all accounts. But, oh, his, his fiance's from, uh, you know, they, she, she's in Los Angeles, and she's not going to want to go back to Wisconsin, and he's going to want to get closer to her and so she can do movies. And Okay, I guess. Yeah, McLovin. Uh, isn't that the same reason that Russell Wilson was linked to the Raiders? Sierra wanted to be a drive away from L.A., and now there's a lot of Aaron Rodgers. And that didn't ha- lead anywhere. Yeah, but John Gruden loves every quarterback that's not his quarterback. So, you know, would the Raiders be interested in Aaron Rodgers? I guess. Everybody should be interested in Aaron Rodgers. Except for the Chiefs. I think we can all be in agreement. There's one team that wouldn't be interested in Aaron Rodgers. Is there another? Well, like Jacksonville's not because they have Trevor Lawrence and the Jets have Zach Wilson. But I, Dave Gettleman, the GM of the Giants, was asked last week, hey, uh, did you make a call about Aaron Rodgers? He goes, no, no. And I'm paraphrasing. No, no, that's uh, none of our business here. And I went, you're the general manager of the Giants. It is your business. Your job is to manage, generally manage. But like, I, okay. The Niners called up, and I guess that's the only call that they received, but Dave Gettleman is, no, no. Like, like you didn't want to pry into somebody, hey, I hear they're having uh, marital issues. Did you call and see if she wants to go out with you? No, 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 it's none of my business here. Yeah, Paul. He's the general manager. What else does he do besides call (laughs) teams about players? I mean, is he on a phone plan that has limited minutes? Like, you know, I'm really over my minutes. I can't call the Packers. Yeah, I don't want to get involved in that. Long distance. Yeah, I don't want to get in the middle of that. Yes, McLevin. Did we speculate, or maybe I speculate, when they took Patrick Sertain, the Broncos, yeah. was there a thought that that might have been a pick for the Packers? But then the Packers went ahead and picked a cornerback. So, yeah. Because you're right. You mentioned before the show, the Broncos are loaded. They have four cornerbacks I've actually heard of. Yeah. And, and Sertain is, is a starter, but I just didn't understand what they were doing. because. And then you take a running back, and I go, okay. You're not set at quarterback, I don't think. Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke, you're not scaring anybody in the AFC West. What other poll questions do you have, McLevin? Okay. uh, I like what the Browns – Browns went all in on defense here. Uh, 
I can't believe that Notre Dame linebacker fell to them. They, they, I tell you, the coverage on Saturday, they seem loaded for Bear next year. They, I thought they did well, you know, and I, I know that I've been very critical of the Browns in, in some of their prior drafts, but it feels like there's, there's more of a, this is what we need. Let's stay in, in, you know, in this vacuum here. Let's not go crazy. Let's just get guys who are going to be able to play, help us, strengthen us. You've got a good defensive line. They, they've got some playmakers there on defense. I, I like what they did. Yeah, Paul. You know, McLovin's reaction really is, uh, uh, in a nutshell, how the draft is viewed by fans. If you get someone that you didn't expect to get, if you get someone in the second round that's supposed to be a third rounder or the yeah. first round, Bears fans are going crazy that they got this uh, uh, offensive lineman, Tevin Jenkins of Oklahoma State, in the second round, he's projected to be a first-round pick. We, no Bears fans know anything about him. We don't know anything about him, but it feels like you got a bargain. It's like getting a steal, getting a sale, getting three shirts for two. And you know this linebacker for Notre Dame, whose name we don't pronounce, but he's really good. Owusu. Oh, he. It feels like you got him at a bargain, and that's what the draft is. And like the Raiders with uh, Leatherwood in the first round, they feel like they overpaid, and that's where we are like now. Yeah. A lot of times, and and you know, I watched probably a couple of complete Notre Dame games. And, and that always helps when you're watching a game because you can show me highlights of a guy from Wisconsin Whitewater. Chances are he's going to look awesome. I, I don't think that they show a, like a highlight reel and you go, we didn't have any good plays to show here. So uh, it is not very good. Uh, we're going to show him lifting weights or something. But for the most part, everybody was really good because that's why they got drafted. It's rare when you go, that guy's not any good. He got drafted. That guy's a backup tackle, and he uh, he had eight catches. No, he's not any good here. Yeah, McLovin. I saw the Elijah Moore highlight clip after he got picked by the Jets, the Mississippi receiver. here. I was like, oh, my God, this guy is – there's no way he's not going to be a superstar. Of course, he's his highlight reel. Yeah. Although I have to tell you, that feels like a really good pick. I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> they got you. <laughs> I, yeah, I loved it because he's one of those guys that you watch and you go, and you're not watching an Ole Miss game for any reason unless you stumble upon it, and you go, wow, that guy's really good. It's like when Rondell Moore, his freshman year, had a game against Ohio State, and I go, wow. Now, he hasn't lived up to that. And he's been injury prone, but he has that potential. When you get to watch an entire game and somebody stands out in the game – it's different than just watching the highlights. You know, you're going to watch a recap of the game and you go, oh, that guy had three touchdown receptions. What else did he do in the game? How often do you mention his name? Like um, the Buccaneers got this guy, uh, Tryon, out of Washington. I loved him. I remember watching a game, Pac-12 wasn't playing last year. I watched a game. He was all over the field. He's just one of those guys. First time I ever saw Palomalo. I was like, my God, does he have a brother? It felt like he was in every single play. And those are the fun players to keep an eye on because they somehow find the football. They're just smart. And uh, so when Tampa Bay drafted him, I go, I know that guy will be in on every play possible. And I, not that they needed help on defense, but I really like the pick. Yeah, McLevin. I mean, he's totally known for his work ethic. He's always trying. Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought I would get that from somebody else in the back row. Yeah. And I love Wang. Yes, I do. And when he screws up, he goes to coach, hey, coach, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I've been working that try on joke out since Thursday night, and it hasn't, no one's laughed at nope. it yet. No. Nope. <laughs> and even now, you're getting a courtesy laugh. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's it. Any other. Uh, poll? Oh, well, the Aaron Rodgers poll, where's he going to be week one? Oh, man. Um, Right now, we have the choices. We were working on the choices over here. Denver, Las Vegas, uh, Green Bay, or Miami were the four that we read rumors about. I don't know if any of them are real. Yeah, but what's Miami do? You you have Tua. Do you, do you keep Tua? It sure seems like Miami is willing to let go of Tua for the right quarterback. Yeah, but Green Bay's got a quarterback. Jordan that, Love. <laughs> that put them in this position. That created the problem to begin with. You're going to bring a quarterback in, then what's that do to Tua and or Jordan Love? No, I, I can't see that happening with the Dolphins. But I love that the Niners took a shot. You know, you took a shot and, uh, you know, the Packers quickly said, no, we're not trading him. 
But if I'm Green Bay, and I know there's that much friction there, and we do have his successor, at least we think, then I would have made that move. You know, it's not popular, but I'm trading a guy who's, what, 37 years of age? Yes, coming off an MVP season. But I gotta st- I've already thought about the future. Last year, i got to continue to think about, okay, where are we, who are we, what can we get? And San Francisco gave up first-round picks to move up, so that hurt them. But if you gave them the number three pick and you gave them a player or two, a starter, then maybe you get their attention. Yeah, McLovin. If they did have that three, would they have taken a quarterback? Green Bay is highest three. I know that no, they have to. But, okay. but you're never going to be at three again, so maybe you take another shot. I know, but then what do you what do you have if you so at three you take Trey Lance who's not ready? Then what do you do with Jordan Love? Is he ready? Not yet. Like I, it just feels like you compound the problem there. But I'd like I like San Francisco at least made a run at it. 